everyone and welcome back to Carefree Caravanning. In this week's video we would like to discuss a couple of topics regarding caravan safety with you. Yeah we we've heard uh, you know you get talking as you do when you're on site and, and we've heard uh, of one story that the hardened caravanners amongst you are going to be going no um, and then we've heard uh, or we saw another video um, that is so distressing that, and we felt that although they're not us we wanted to share with you so you guys maybe learn, learn from, from other experience. people's misfortunes and mistakes so uh, i'd like to start with um, the gas on caravans so when you have a caravan you have um, two types of gas you may get uh, butane or propane and also um, you can have different size bottles, so four and a half kilos, seven kilos that we have, or 10 kilos. Um, our, we, heard, we heard a story last time we were out and someone was telling us about a neighbor of theirs when they were caravanning. And they said that they always carry a spare full gas bottle because they didn't want to run out, uh, which is fine until they said what they do. Uh, and they carried this gas bottle full under their bed. Um, oh my goodness. Now, everything about that is wrong. On its side. On its side, <laughs> yeah, because they couldn't fit it upright, standing upright on it uh, under the bed, so they put it on its side, a full gas bomb. Now, that is so, so wrong because. So dangerous. It's so dangerous because a gas bottle should always be kept upright. And the reason that, it, even if it's full, there is always going to be a little bit of air. Um, from where the gas is to the valve and that's there for a purpose. If you put the gas bottle on its side, the valve that is the weakest part of the bottle can basically explode. The whole gas bottle will explode and if that exploded, boy, you're going to have a bad night's sleep <clears throat> Yeah. at the very least because it will go straight through your caravan and the next door neighbours and possibly the next door neighbours and heavens for uh, I think the reason they did that was. was because they always bought a spare one just in case they ran out. Yeah, I get um, that. And it I was because they didn't have anywhere to store it. I thought, oh, well, let's store it under the bed. I know, but you, gas bottles should either always be stored outside or in um, lockers. Ventilated. Yeah, in ventilated lockers. Now, caravans have specific places to put the gas bottle which are vented because you may get gas leaks anyway. So. Please, 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 please never store a gas bottle inside your caravan. Or it's, on its side. Or certainly, even if it's empty, don't put it on its side, even if it's just because it fits there, because that's a huge, huge no-no. Mm. So the gas bottle, that's that one covered. Right, the next one, um, now this was a fellow YouTube channel, Caravan Adventures with Archie. Helen and Jane and Archie, Archie the dog. Archie the dog, yes. Yeah, now, terrible, they terrible. Rec very recently, they were going away on their holiday and they were on the motorway traveling to Wales on the M5. And, no, sorry, they weren't going to Wales. <coughs> They, the they, were going, they were going to they, they were on the motorway. Snowdonia, weren't they? Or going to yeah, Snowdonia. but they, they would have stopped off somewhere first. Yeah. Um, so they were travelling along the motorway and they had a tyre blowout. And now it caravan. was the scariest experience for them and they coped with it superbly. So well done, girls. Absolutely. It's incredible. Thumbs up, we, honestly. We've actually, we'll put a card up here um, that shows their video and it's yeah. a shocking, and do have a look terrifying at experience. Have a, look at the, have a look at their video because it's, it is just, it will move you. It will yeah. absolutely move yeah. you and it will make you think three times before you... Thankfully, they came out the other end and, and they, they're oh, completely safe, no, no harm to them. to them. It didn't even spoil their holiday no, it didn't. they it just didn't. decided to carry on. It wasn't going to deter yeah. them from their holiday but, or um, spoil it. They were, as, as we were saying, as I was saying, <laughs> they were driving on the motorway, had the blowout and very sensibly, Helen, who was driving, didn't um, apply the brakes because when that does happen, you should never... Um, put your foot on the brake. Just yeah, let it I, I slow down. And I would have done. I don't know if I could have done that. So absolutely, hats off to you both because it's a natural instinct. If your car is going out of control, be it a skid or a blowout on a tyre, 
um, the natural instinct is to, is to hit break. the brake and hit it harder yes. and push as hard as you can, yeah. which is the wrong, wrong thing to do. So um, fair play to you, Helen. Yes, Absolutely yes. fair play to you. Well, well done. And Jane for also telling Helen to don't touch the brake. <laughs> if you just take your foot off the accelerator, if things are going wrong, take your foot off the accelerator and it will all just literally fall into place and yeah. then when it starts slowing down then apply the brakes. Yeah so they, they were pulled over to the hard shoulder, uh, stood behind the barrier and sensibly behind a concrete pillar as well yeah. where they were very safe and waited but for the... Even on AA that man. video you'll see the speed of the cars and the lorries and the cars towing caravans yes, and the motorhomes. Yes they actually homes. said it was ridiculous the speed that these vehicles were travelling yeah. at especially cars towing a caravan so please keep your speed, speed limit on a down. when towing a caravan the speed limit is 60 miles an hour maximum and caravans are not designed to go faster than that um, you know obviously you, you drive as as, as as slow as you want but don't go over 60 miles an hour you drive to where you feel comfortable um, yeah I mean even if you don't feel pressurized by vehicles behind you you just take your time absolutely and you'll get where you want to go to safely um, now Apparently, the reason this happened to their caravan was because when they purchased it, it had been standing in storage or wherever it had been um, for quite a long period. And apparently, when that happens, it, the wheel can go egg-shaped yeah, yeah. just from standing for a long period of time. Um, and they think that's what probably caused it. So yeah. they're I would imagine that they're going to have to change the other tyre now as well in case that yeah, one has suffered would, the same experience. On that note, uh, I, I mean, some advice that we would give is when your caravan's in storage, if it's in storage for more than, say, eight weeks, it's it's got to be worth moving the caravan a couple of inches so where that's the tyre and the bottom bit is here. Um, you just move it a couple of inches so the tyre, just, just rotate the tyre a little bit. Um, so because you know, with the heat like we've got today, um, you know, tyres can deform. So just yeah. rotate it. Um, another thing the girls mentioned in their video um, is a tyre pal. Yeah, you know what? Which they're we, going to get. I was going to buy that, wasn't I, at the NEC earlier this year. Um, and I said to the guy, I'll come back. But then I bought a Cadillac instead. Well, Trust me, when we get back from our holiday, that is the first thing that we are buying, a tyre pal. Tyre pal, it, we're not promoting them in any way. So uh, there are other manufacturers out there of tyre products. Um, basically what they do is tyre pal, for example, um, you get two valves that if you've got a single axle that go onto each tyre, um, and then you get a header mm. unit that goes into the car. Then you get a header unit that goes into the car and the valves send signals to the header unit which will show you display the tyre pressures on both sides, the heat of the tyres on both sides and lots of warnings and bleeps if something is changing. So if the tyre pressure suddenly goes down it will bleep at you severely and also if the uh, tyre is getting hot it will tell you as well. Also um, beside the door there's a little yeah. Um, panel isn't there before that... we go on to that i just wanted to say um i've seen on social media people saying about when they put their caravan into storage they jack up the caravan and take the wheels off for security now i've checked with our insurance company which is one of the major ones and asked them if that was okay if i did that um, and they said if you do your insurance is invalid basically because if you take the wheels off of your caravan Yes, it's going to save the problem of, of wheels, you know, uh, deforming, what have you, or tyres, um, but there's no lock. You have no lock on, there's no security on the caravan apart from a hitch lock. And some thieves now do carry tyres with them and they just bolt the tyres on and away they go. They don't even have to cut off any locks. So if you do take your wheels off, I would highly recommend you check with your insurance company and let them know that you've taken the wheels off um, because um, you may not be covered and it, will, it may invalidate your warranty. Yeah. On the tyres, um, there's a really easy way of checking how old the tyres are. Caravan tyres are designed, or, or sorry, not designed, but they have to be changed after five years, irrespective of the amount of tread you have on them. Caravans don't, tyres don't get a lot of tread, so you, you may have more tread than you think, but you're 
a dealer or a mechanic will say, I'm sorry, it's over five years old, we have to change it. That's pu purely not because of wear and tear, it's more that the, um, the climate. Um, so you have to change your tyres after five years old. Uh, we're just going to show you on ours um, how you check the age of your tyre and there is a DOT number on the tyre which we'll show you what that stands for, Department of Transport. So we will show you that um, sh sh now. Now. <laughs> okay. Right, so this is our caravan obviously and now this model uh, was registered in 2018. Um, however, um, the tyres are um, the manufacturers buy tyres, a bit like the fridges and the toilets. They, they buy them, they outsource them, and then they're sent to the manufacturers and they're taken when they need to build a caravan. Now, the, our tyre is actually a um, 2017 tyre, although the caravan is 2018. So, on the tyre, on every tyre, caravan tyre, you're going to have a DOT number. DOT stands for Department of Transport. And then you're going to have a few letters and blah, blah, blah. And then you've got a box here that is... Um, outlined with four digits. Now ours says 3717, 3717. Now that means it, the tyre was manufactured in week 37 of 2017. So week 37, 2017. So um, as we said earlier on, the um, tyre life really is a maximum of five years. So um, you know, we're gonna to have to keep an eye on this because this tire is now two years old, um, although we've only had the caravan for six, seven months. Um, it's also worth checking both sides, just in case when they do pick the tires, one tire is um, younger or, or maybe younger than the other tire. So it's worth checking both sides because it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be from the same batch. So that's the tire. Yeah, that was really informative. Thank you for that, Keith. Yeah. And also the little panel that yeah. I was mentioning on the door. <laughs> yeah, by, by the door of, uh, I think, most caravans, they have a plate that is put on um, at the manufacturer, and that will give you the serial number of the caravan and um, a few other bits and pieces, but it also tells you the tyre size and it also tells you the tyre pressure. So if you're unsure of the tyre pressure, just look at the plate above the front door. Yes, That's it. yes. Um, now, the next thing we were going to discuss... The next thing is not actually about caravan no. safety per se. I mean, this is more about um, the security. Now, we did do a video that was out some time ago about um, the security we use. Um, now, many of you know this is our second caravan, not our choice, but our second caravan. And uh, a couple of weeks before we actually picked this up, we, um, I wanted to buy, or oh, we had to buy the Alco chassis secure lock. Um, that was from the insurance company, uh, said, yeah, we're going to insure you, but we, you've got to have the Alco sh uh, chassis secure lock. They were, at that time, I think they were about £220, ranging from £200 to £300, depending on where you buy it. Now, I looked on eBay, uh, there's other... Um, auction size available but I looked on eBay and I saw one for I think it was about 80 pounds um, and I contacted the uh, seller and um, sorry said about sorry about that, that. <laughs> someone cut in the grass I contacted the seller and um, asked them if it's his you know have you got the, the uh, registration number card when you buy a uh, if you buy a uh, Alco secure lock you will in the kit you will get a registration card which has a unique number on it. Now it is, that number is not on the lock. So don't think, well, I've got the lock, I can just get the number off of that, because you can't. You have to have this card. Now I spoke to Alco, who have asked me to put it across in, um, to, to you guys as well, that if you do buy an Alco chassis secure lock um, without a registration card, Alco will not, under any circumstances, under any circumstances cover that under warranty moreover it can even affect your insurance because um, if there's a problem um, and the insurance company say we will leave the alco um, card uh, you haven't got it and it's not registered with alco then you've got a problem so please don't be tempted to save to yourself 100 eBay. or <coughs> 150 pounds which is great but without that card you've got nothing really yeah so that was just something we wanted to do, just to yes, tag in at yes, the end. Yes, yes, yes. It's not really safety, but it's um, just a word of warning, yeah. basically. 
Well, that's it for this week. Yeah, uh, I just want to say thank you so much to Helen and Jane for letting us share your story. And Thanks very much, girls. We're so pleased that you're if you safe and got through the other side safe and sound and all's well. And we hope that you had a lovely holiday. Okay, right. Thank yeah. you very much for watching. Thanks very much indeed. If um, you have liked what you've seen, please give us a thumbs up. And yep. if you haven't done so, please subscribe to our channel. Yeah, there'll be a little little caravan will come over my left shoulder. We'd love you to come and join us and share our experiences along yeah. the way. There's the lawnmower again. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much indeed. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.